Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to Inner Work for Greater Good. My name is Emily Eldridge. I am the founder of Changelight, the creator of the Changelight system, and I'm here to help you with inner work that will accelerate your power to feel good and do good so you can make an even bigger difference in the world. Because I know that those of us who do work so hard on ourselves, that's really what we want is to be better human beings, right? That's what it's all about. And to be better human beings for others. Whoops, sorry, let me turn off my phone. Do not disturb. There we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, so um, here's a question. Here's a consideration. Let's put it this way. When it comes to those of us, speaking of those of us who do inner work, speaking of those of us who do work hard on ourselves, um, my guess is if you're like me, you are someone who really takes responsibility for your behaviors, for your thoughts, your feelings. You really are all about what is going on inside of me that's causing me to show up a certain way or caused me to react a certain way or why do I have certain patterns and relationships or work or, you know, what have you. And so, you know, a lot of times those of us who are very self-aware or at least trying to be and at least really trying to work on ourselves um, if you're like me, you probably have in your history or in your current life right now, a tendency to not only take responsibility for your behaviors and to try to, and to do the inner work on yourself, but to tend to try to do it for the other person as well, and or to take more responsibility for an issue or a problem or a situation or what have you um, between you and someone else or you inside of, let's say, a group of people. Let's say there's a pattern of toxic behavior. Let's say that there's a pattern of conflicts or there's struggles. Let's say that, um, you know, you keep running into, um, you know, certain circumstances and, and, and thinking tending to take a lot of responsibility and thinking, well, then I just need to work on this and I need to fix what's going on inside of me that's basically causing people to react this way or that's creating this problem in the relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship or a friendship. And so I don't know about you, but I definitely have an old history of taking more, taking responsibility for more than what's mine. So I end up doing the work on myself, but also doing like all this work, hoping that it's going to change that person's behavior. Or another way this can show up is we try to get the other person to really, you know, see what's wrong and really work really, really hard within the relationship, the dynamic to get them to have a shift as well, get them to see, you know, the work that they can do themselves or even try to do that work for them, you know, on them, you know, whether you have a certain technique that you do, or maybe you're a coach, um, or, you know, you, you have a therapist, let's say, and it's like, you're trying to get that other person to be as involved as you are. And so you're working super, super, super hard in that relationship to fix whatever's going on. But at the same time, that other person isn't working as hard as you are. They're not really doing their own inner work. They're not taking responsibility, as much responsibility as you are for their part in the dynamic. We always know it takes two to tango. And so as much as we, those of us who do inner work, you know, sometimes we can tend to do all the tangoing, you know, we can tend to do too much dancing or too much leading to try to get the other person to do their part, to play their role, to see where they're, you know, having stuff they need to work on within the relationship so that everything can be better. Um, this is always very well intentioned. I will put it that way. Let's let me just put that as a, you know, say, want to say that here, that it's always well intentioned, right? We want the other person to be better, but it's also because a lot of times it, it can be actually self-serving. We want a better relationship. And so we figure if we can put that work into it, you know, if we can try to help them be different, then things are going to be better. But sometimes the other person just is not where you are. They're just not taking responsibility. They're just not seeing whatever may be their part in the situation. They're not working on the healing. They're not, um, or rather, even more toxically, this is kind of what made me think about it is while I was watching a TV show where this was some of the behaviors is they're projecting and saying, well, you're the one who has the problem or you're the one who's being this way or you're the one who needs to work on yourself. Or, you're the one who needs therapy. That can be a very toxic thing as well where the other person 
rather than going, you know what, I see that we've got an issue going on here. We have a bunch of issues, whether again, friendship or romantic relationship, you know what, we both need to do our own work on this and hopefully be able to come together and work together as well to be better in this connection that we have um, or in this, these issues that we're experiencing. But sometimes the other person not, not only doesn't do their own inner work, they actually turn it back on you. And they make it your fault that there's all the problems, which can end up exacerbating that tendency that you may already have, that I've definitely had, of thinking, well, yeah, it is, it is me. And I just, if I can just figure this out, if I can just work on myself and, you know, sort of unlock the mysteries inside of me and heal whatever's going on inside of me, then it's going to fix everything. And then, and, you know, you can fill in the blanks there, then they will treat me with more respect, then they will come back to me, or then they will apologize, or if I apologize enough times and take responsibility, then they'll, they'll see it, they'll get it. That is the extreme version. That's, of course, the toxic version of basically when we're trying so hard to take responsibility for ourselves and our behaviors, that the other person not only is not, but they're, and they, they are not, and they are faulting us for the problems. Um, that I will just, I just want to throw in there um, for whatever it's worth, that if you're experiencing that kind of behavior, that projection and that shaming and that person's lack of, you know, refu their refusal to take responsibility, but then putting it all on you. I'm just going to throw this out here. I highly recommend watching some videos on things like narcissism. Um, because projection, extreme projection like that and lack of accountability and empathy and responsibility can actually be examples of and symptoms of narcissism. That could be what you're dealing with. I am not going to name names or, you know, say this person's a narcissist. I'm just going to really recommend that you watch videos about it. And especially, I really love the work of Dr. Romani. R-A-M-A-N-I, she's got tons of videos on YouTube and she is, as far as I can tell, like she, and, and you know, from people I've talked to, she really, she really is where it's at. She really knows her stuff. And so just want to put that out there. But really, I want to talk about this, this dynamic of when we're the only ones doing the inner work and the other person is not. Um, let me just say, just something to know as a rule of thumb in every scenario, in every relationship. We are only responsible for ourselves, our stuff, what we bring to the relationship, to the situation. And mind you, for parents out there, I'm not saying you're not responsible for your kids. Uh, and there's 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 a whole bunch of layers there, so I'm not even going to go there. I'm just talking about, let's say, for now, just between two adults. We are responsible for our own behaviors, our own thoughts, our own feelings, however we show up. We are not responsible for what that other person does, how they react, how they behave, whatever their wounds are, whatever their triggers are. We are not responsible for that other person's stuff. They are responsible for their stuff. And here's why. I think I've talked about this before. For one thing, we can't control them, period. You can't control what that person's triggers are. You can't control what their emotional stuff is. You can't control their thoughts and feelings. You can try, and I've tried, and I know a lot of us have tried. And there are reasons why we try, psychological reasons. Usually it's about control. We think that if we can maybe help that person feel better or not react that way, then we'll be more safe. So a lot of times we're trying to wanting to make ourselves more safe by trying to consciously and unconsciously trying to control that person's reactions or their emotional state. So I'll throw that out there as well. But ultimately, you're not responsible for my feelings or my thoughts or my triggers or my, you, you can't because you can't control what goes on inside of me just as I can't control what goes on inside of you. We can obviously have an impact on each other. We can obviously say things that you know, that maybe even to deliberately trigger someone or then accidentally trigger someone. But ultimately, their trigger is their trigger and it's their job to work on it just as ours. It's our job to work on our triggers. It is not our job to do someone else's inner work for them. We cannot. That other person has to choose to do their own inner work, to be a part of the solution. And that includes even if you're like, okay, I'm going to go to couples therapy with my husband or my, my partner, and you get in there and it's like, okay, well, this person seems like they're choosing to be here, but are they really then taking the lessons, doing the inner work just as you are? 
it's just something to really consider in terms of when we relate to other people, how, how much are we, how much more responsibility for other people's behaviors, thoughts, and feelings and reactions, how much responsibility are we, how much more than necessary are we taking? How much are you taking on that is not yours to take on, that is not your responsibility, and that frankly you can't control, period, full stop. Because here's the reality. I could say to you, you know, well, or let's say you say to me, I'll, I'm gonna put it that way because I don't wanna say anything mean to you. Um, but let's say you were to say to me, you're so stupid. I could have all kinds of reactions to that. No, I'm not, I'm not stupid. How dare you say that to me? Or I could be like, that, that hurt my feelings. I'm not stupid, don't call me stupid. Or I could say, oh, wow, that's interesting. I wonder why you feel that way. How, you know, what, what, makes you, what makes you say that? Why are you thinking that I'm stupid? Um, th the point is, I could have any number of inner and outer reactions to you telling me that I'm stupid. What is it that determines that reaction, both inner and outer? And I say inner and outer because sometimes someone can have an external reaction that belies what's actually going on inside. But really, what is it? Let's just say inside. What is it de that determines how I react to you calling me stupid? It has to do with my emotional state in the moment, my own personal triggers, my own def defense net mechanisms or lack thereof, my own ego, my own level of narcissism or, or fragmentation on the inside. But the point is, what it's what's going on inside of me that determines my reaction to you saying that to me. And that's not to say that therefore it's okay to just tell someone, well, you're stupid. If you feel like it, well, then it's your fault that you're feeling that way because that's actually right there. That's actually, um, that's like a gaslighting, you know, it's, you know that, that's actually kind of a gaslighting maneuver to then just be like, well, I'm just gonna say whatever I'm gonna say. And if somebody has a reaction, that's their fault. That's their trigger. That kind of approach, that, that can be a form of gaslighting. So I'm not saying that therefore you're not responsible ever, ever, ever for how you behave and how other people react. But I am saying that you can say that to me and you can say that to 10 people and we might have all different reactions to it. And it's because of what's going on inside of us. I will tell you that for myself, one of the big motivators over the years for me with inner work is that I didn't like the way I reacted when people would say things to me. I didn't like getting upset. I didn't like getting triggered. I didn't like feeling hurt. I didn't like, you know, getting angry. I didn't like my own reaction. I wanted to feel at peace within myself, no matter what anyone said to me. And so that's where like, that's why if you were to tell me I'm stupid, I might be like taken aback. I'm like, well, what was that about? You know, but then I make it like, well, okay, so where's that coming from? You know, and then part of my thoughts might also be like, you know, I check it with myself. Am I stupid? Well, yeah, I'm probably stupid in some ways. There are plenty of ways in which I'm not that, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know where it's at um, or I may have a lot to work on, but am I generally, generally stupid? No, I am confident enough in myself and I trust myself enough and I'm educated enough, et cetera. So no, I'm not stupid. I might make mistakes, but it doesn't just, you know, dismiss me as stupid. And so I'm, I would be able to go, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, that kind of hurt my feelings that you said that, but all right, you know, that's your perception. And then I might even be able to recognize and go, well, you know, maybe that's that person's, maybe they feel stupid. And so that's why they feel the need to tell me I'm stupid if I didn't do anything to solicit that reaction. So again, there are all kinds of compli complicated levels of understanding within a relationship situation, within an interaction between when we're, we're dealing with my inner stuff, your inner stuff, you know, we're all dealing with everybody else's inner stuff. But my point of this video is that when we're talking about doing your inner work, make sure that you are only doing your inner work and you're not trying to get other people to, you're not trying to do their inner work for them, or you're not doing the vast majority of the inner work in the relationship. If it's a situation where really there are two things, you know, two people with issues going on here, and you know, people each need to take responsibility 
for their own roles, their own reactions, their own stuff in the relationship, in the interaction. Okay. So that's just, that's the, my main message today is just really notice when you are trying too hard to do somebody else's work for them, or you're taking on more than you are responsible for and trying to change yourself so that that other person doesn't have a certain reaction, for example. Um, and also, as you're looking at that within yourself, be aware of what is it like if you are taking on more than you should, if you are taking too much responsibility in an interaction with someone else or in, you know, a dynamic with someone else, then consider why that might be. And I did mention earlier in this, con in this um, episode, I mentioned about control. I will tell you that I did that for a long time. I thought that if I can just do my own inner work, then I could basically fix everything. And that if I can just heal whatever I've got going on inside of me, then it'll heal the relationship and everything will be better. But ultimately, I realized that ultimately it was actually me trying to control the situation. I was trying to control the energy and the emotions within the, those interactions or with that person. And it was also trying to, because, because I thought that if I could make things better in this scenario, then actually I could protect myself and I wouldn't get hurt, you see? So it was really all about me serving myself in that moment. And, you know, as much as I was trying to help the other person, some of it was also because I just, I thought if, if that person will, will could, if I could get that person to feel better, then I won't get hurt, you see? And that is not that, in my experience, that is a very toxic approach. I used to, it's just a very unhealthy approach. It's what I used to do. I still probably sometimes do it. I'm catching myself here and there. But I just want to point this out, um, that as we talk about inner work, make sure you're only doing your own inner work that's yours to do not anyone else's because it's just their, their inner work is not your job. It's never your job. All right. Hope this is helpful. As always, I'm Emily at uh, changelight.world. You can email me and check out our Changelight community where we've got lots of free programs. We've got a free course, a free community, and you can connect with others in there who are also doing their inner work for greater good, changelight.world. All right, Mwah, I love you. I hope you have a fabulous week. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, it's the day after Valentine's Day, so I'm wearing red. That's where I'm. That's why I'm wearing a lot of red. So I meant to mention that before. I hope you had a great Valentine's Day, you know, with someone else or maybe just with yourself because you are special and precious and wonderful and worthy of love. All right, talk to you later.